Hi, Tam Wrigley here and welcome back to the Wine O'Clock Show. It is Friday, it is five o'clock and it's time for you to kick off those heels and shoes and grab yourself a wine. We've got a cracker of a show today. We talk about the Kim Kardashian photo, the Sharapova debacle, International Women's Day and a bizarre breakup over an iPhone. So grab your glasses, sit back and enjoy this week's show. Griffin here, actor. Um, at, tell us a little bit about you, Craig. Uh, so basically, I'm a screen actor at the moment. I'm doing a little bit of stage work. Um, I've been just trying to learn everything I can about the industry. And uh, Are you new to acting? Well, about two years in now. Yeah. So I decided at 42, this is what I want to do. Best thing I've ever done. It took me until I was 42 to work out exactly what it was I wanted to do. Yes. So excellent. Now that I've made the decision, it's the very best decision I think I've ever made, apart from marrying my wife. Yeah. Just <laughs> <laughs> <He's> taken girls, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and again, we've got Helene Dyke. And in sporting news, Sharapova admitted this week to taking the banned substance meldonium for over nearly a decade, which has only just now been put on the banned substance list. Sharapova failed a drug test leading up to the Australian Open and now Nike, Porsche, Swiss and Tag have already distanced themselves from the star that once held their endorsements. Let's get the panel's view. Yes. A bit of controversy hit the news this week with our uh, Maria Sharapova and the drug scandal. Thoughts on, you know, I guess she's been taking this drug for 10 years and it's only just now hit the list and people are in uproar. Apparently she was tested just before the Australian Open and um, it, it, it was tested in her, in her blood. Are we, like, going, taking this a little too far? I know she's been dropped now by Nike, she's been dropped by Tag, she's been dropped by Porsche. Mm -hmm. Swiss, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what, what, Craig, what do you reckon? I mean, it has only just been put onto the list. So prior to that, you can't really concern yourself with. Yeah. I do think, however, whether you're a sports person or an actor or whatever you are, at the end of the day, you're a business. Yes. And I mean, she first and foremost had the responsibility to know. Her people, probably even more so, had the responsibility to know. I was going to say, like, why, why have her people not said, sorry, hon, you can't take this drug anymore? Like, you know, the people that look after her. That's right. Her doctors, yeah. she, her, was, her she was given. And her, her, you know, she, was, she would have a, a handful of people that look after There her. was, and she was actually given documentation of, they're given documentation every year of what drugs are no longer allowed to be taken. That's right. But the funny thing about this is what that drug is all about. Um, I read on a couple of reports. One, it's used for diabetes. Two, it's used for heart problems mm. and for blood flow. Yeah. But a lot of athletes have been taking it for performance enhancing. Right. Um, there's a couple of Russian um, athletes that have been tested positive with the same drug. Um, so in saying that, uh, one report stipulated that um, it should only be taken in a four to six week period. Exactly. And, and that's, that's what it. even the manufacturer has yeah. said, that it shouldn't be taken for more than five, six weeks at the most like anyway. 10 years? Really? Give me a break. She's an athlete. There's only one reason why she was taking that drug, and that was to enhance her performance as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. She did stipulate in one of the reports that her family has a history of diabetes. That doesn't mean you should be taking a drug when you don't have it yourself. So I think that what she's explaining of why she was taking it is a little bit of a cop out. She used it for performance enhancing, um, and you know what? If they ban her, they ban her because she's the thing done is, the wrong if it thing. is a performance enhancing drug, why was it not on the list to start with? It's taken yeah, years yeah. to uh, find out for them as, to ban it. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And as a professional athlete, you know that you know if you take even so much as cough syrup or vitamins there's any number of things you just know that you, you either can't do it or if you do it has to be that carefully monitored yeah. by yourself but don't, don't, does and she by have your to doctors? check everything that she inhales like everything that she eats drinks takes she has to get approval from her physician basically For sure yes. yeah like even nasal sprays there's a lot of things that can interfere mm. you know and at the end of the day it's her responsibility and she has said to the media, she accepts full responsibility, but that doesn't get her off the hook. No. Either, you what do you, what do you think should happen? I think she should be banned because she did take a drug that she knew and she was well informed that this drug was banned on the 1st of January 2016. They would all receive the memo. Yeah. Um, so 
Craig, what do you think? I think the same. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, the responsibility falls firmly on her shoulders yeah. and she has to accept that. And the Kardashians have hit the news again this week with Kim posting a naked selfie of herself on her social pages with her bits blacked out with the caption, when you're like, I have nothing to wear, LOL. This has caused a bit of support and backlash from society and other celebrities with Bette Midler and Kim having a few words over Twitter. Let's get our panel's view. Should we be banning Kim Kardashian for posting, you know, nude pics on the internet? <laughs> oh, I do have an issue with this. Um, it sounds like we may disagree then, ladies oh, first. Yeah, I do have an issue with this. I mean, what is she famous for? Being famous. That's all she's famous for. Um, and you know what? Ben Midler, she actually said it quite funny how, sti how she stipulated saying, look, we've seen everything else. What we need to do is you need a camera on the inside now. <laughs> oh, I so saw they can, that. I, I thought that was what quite clever. I can't remember word by word, but it was very, very clever. I think it was, a, it was a tweet, wasn't it? She said the only way we could see more would be if she swallowed a camera. A camera, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Uh, the Kardashians Posting. are known, though, for yeah, being know, controversial, putting themselves out there. It's you know, a young girl. Wasn't there an image of her a couple of years ago, this, you know, ginormous bum on the end of a champagne glass? You know, she's known for doing this, though. So why is it so shocking when this image comes out? I have a problem with these young girls that are growing up now. They're looking at these Kardashians. They want to be the Kardashians. They want to look like the Kardashians. Yeah, I have a massive issue. In saying issue that, I mean, credit where credit's due, I'm not, I'm certainly by no means the world's biggest Kardashian fan by any stretch of the imagination. However, credit where credit's due, she's a very successful marketer, a very successful businesswoman who's running a multi million dollar empire quite successfully. Mm. Um, to use the argument of it just being a flash in the pan, if she disappeared after the first yes. year of even, episodes, you'd go, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, she's she's stood the test of time, you know, she's very, very successful, yeah. smart within her own right, you know, credit where credit's due. Is she creating the controversy intentionally? I think so, oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know. Yes. Does she love it? Yes. yes. <laughs> Does she do it again? You bet, stay yes, tuned, yes, yes. you know. Yeah. They're narcissists, that's what I, I think they are, and um, yeah, I don't agree and, with and that. And I think the comment was, oh, you know, like, nothing to wear, LOL, and they own, like, a clothing company, and, you know, their wardrobes are filled with clothes. Um, the photos did pop up on my Twitter feed, and they are quite arty, you know, it's the old argument, is it pornography or is it art? Well, they are quite arty shots. In the um, bathroom? <laughs> against a mirror? I don't call that art. I call that a selfie. You know, it is a selfie. They it's were not arty, arty. selfies. <laughs> <laughs> they, had a bit of, they had a bit of black tape, you know, in the right yeah, spot. It's, it's a selfie. And, you know, the other thing that I'm questioning is that there was a photo taken of her a couple of days or a week ago, which she had dark This photo hair. is 12, 12, uh, it's yeah, 12 months old. It's old. Yeah. So why yeah. are you reproducing a photo saying, I've got nothing to wear, ha, ha, ha. How about, if you want to be genuine, how about you put a photo up that was taken actually on that day and do it instead of doing showing everyone the the stretch marks and all yeah well but do you know what i mean if you want to be real about yeah. it let's be real about it take a genuine photo that was done on that day not something that's over 12 months old oh revenge is very sweet and a man has locked his ex-girlfriend out of her iphone as he claims the phone belongs to him and he wants it back. Refusing to return the phone and after several heated text messages, the ex-boyfriend reported the phone stolen on Find My Phone, which then wiped the entire content of the phone and locked her out of the system. He then messaged her via email with the hashtag phoneless. Phones. There was a pretty funny case uh, that happened this week where a, a, a couple separated and split up and she had his phone and refused to give it back to him in after a few heated texts about him wanting his phone back he decided to um put up find my phone and then wipe and delete his the entire contents of this this woman's phone because she refused to give his phone back and you know sent her a lovely message basically going ha 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 hashtag phoneless yeah <laughs> I read about this. Is, is he wrong or is he right? Oh, I think he's clever. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I think he's really clever. I'll have no fury like a man scorned. Yeah. Like <laughs> Which begs me to ask, have you guys ever gone to a, a length of doing something to get back at an ex? 
Well, I've never. Oh, you've never. I've never had an ex, so I'm out of this one. She's married <laughs> her high school sweetheart. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's sweet. oh, it's cute. No, I'm the same. I, I always break up amicably. I don't think there's any. I don't think there's any need or room for revenge, you know? Just, mm. if it hasn't worked out, go your own ways, do your own thing, let bygones be bygones. I'm not a big revenge. You're not a, I think there was, there was one thing, like somebody's changed their status on Facebook and that's how somebody found out that they've been dumped because he's gone from, you know, in a relationship to oh, single. that's so bad. <laughs> that's social media. Or the old that's text really message, bad. you know, out. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I don't want to be with you anymore. No. I yeah. mean, even if it's just like a, you know, not a very, a very short term relationship, not something that's long term, just go your own way. You know, you don't have to, you, you hear about these stories of damaging cars and property and yes. all this. So, I mean, there's some really yes, extreme some cases. Stories. Yeah, there is some horrendous stories, but there's a reason why some women scorn do that. I mean, if they've been with a partner for such a long time and they've cheated or they've done this or mm. they've humiliated them in any way, I just think go girl power. You know, I'll, I'll probably burn my husband's clothes or do something. Like that. <laughs> I've actually said to him a little bit more than I would do to him. Cut off his if, private parts. Yeah, and, and burn shooting. them. Yeah. yeah. And if you're watching, John Bobbitt, look out. Be afraid. Yeah. Be very afraid. No, he's a darling. <laughs> International Women's Day celebrates the economic, political, and social achievements of women, past, present, and future, and highlights the pressing issue we continue to face, which raises the question: equality. Has it been reached? So we're celebrating women. There's yes. been a lot of controversy, I guess, about why are we not celebrating men? Or, you know, is, have we got to the stage yet where there's that equality um, with men and women in the workplace, whether it be politics, economics, privately, all that sort of stuff? I think we've come a long, long way, um, even to when I was a young girl. I think um, the job opportunities are there for us now. Um, women are getting paid. Um, higher um, in some jobs, not in all jobs, um, but I do think we also have to be realistic of what we as women are capable of doing and what we're not capable of, capable of doing. Mm. There are some jobs out there that women just cannot do and some people go to the extreme and say we can do everything. No, we can't. Like men can't give birth. <laughs> you know, we can't do certain jobs that men can do mm. so I think that um, it's all fantastic International Women's Day and I think it's a great awareness that we're all out there now and we're achieving um, so many different things but we also have to be real about it um, in regards to you know with men and what we can and can't do. Mm. I think in a perfect world we certainly wouldn't need it but at the end of the day, this is far from a perfect world and it's all about balance. It's about mm. trying to achieve a balance. And I think that's why it's such a fantastic thing because it's trying to correct an imbalance that's been there for far too long. Mm. Uh, and sure, yeah, I agree totally. Things have come such a long way, mm. but there's still so, so, so much. much more to go. No, I think at the end of the day, I think it's, it's a necessity. I think it's a great thing. Anything that helps us move towards that point of gender equality, whether it's male, female, or or either, you know, coming into the transgender issue as well. Yes, you know? yeah. Why absolutely. not have an International Transgender Day? Yep. I, I'm not aware of there being one, but I yeah, think it would it, be a great thing Mardi as well. <laughs> well, that's what it I is. would think. <laughs> in some ways, it is. <laughs> <laughs> last yeah. week in Sydney. Yeah, last week. Yeah, week in Sydney. fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And again, I mean, all of these things have all helped us move along to the point that we're at today. Oh, absolutely. Well, and when you think about like the 60s, I, I guess even the 20s and this, you know, up to the 60s and 70s, you know, women were still, you know, you will be at home, you will cook dinner, you will clean the house. You know, we've in 40 years, we've evolved, we've so evolved mm -hmm. a lot. Yes, definitely. Um, yeah. You know, considering where where we've come from. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So now's a fun fun bit where we get to play Never Have I Ever and you let all the secrets out of, our, out of your bag, Craig. <laughs> so you get a, a little paddle going, I have never, or I have. I'm going to ask you. <laughs> you look scared. Don't, don't look scared. <laughs> and you you're sweating under the, the collar fence. already. Yeah. It's not in here. <laughs> you're not asking on the fence with this. Can I phone either. a friend? <laughs> Can I phone a friend? <laughs> No, that's Can I phone, Can I phone my lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> no, better. Should I phone my wife? <laughs> Make sure I can answer this question. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. 
Have, never have I ever called someone the wrong name during sex. I've never, no. I've oh, never. no, I've never. <laughs> Are you sure now? Are you sure now? I'm 100%. I'm a bit like, mm, I don't know about that one. I'm 110 percent Lock that in, Eddie. Never have I ever joined the Mile High Club. Oh, I, oh, 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 oh come on. Come on. You were sitting I have actually thing. wanted to, but just have not had the opportunity yet. Was we, that a mercy flick? It was just like to a, establish that the wife, no, I... wife, she would like to, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I'd love to. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should all go, I haven't, but I would like to. Yes. <laughs> we actually, last time we were flying to LA, we were like, yes, we're so going to do this. And then we both just chickened out. We did Oh, really? So we're like... Nervous? But one day I will say, I have, but yeah. at the moment... I have never. never. Never have I ever made a business call from the toilet. Oh! <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I've actually taken calls while I'm in the toilet too. Do you mute it like if you're like, because us girls, like when we twinkle, that makes noise. Or well, boys would too, it makes a noise. There's a, there's a little um, trick with that. You just put toilet paper in the toilet first so you don't hear anything. <laughs> the fireman's blanket. Yeah, that's oh, right, that's right, what you that's do. <laughs> But the only thing that does give you away is it echoes. It's the echo. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, when I, I, I put it on mute and then I listen to them talking while I'm doing all my bits, and then when I have to answer, I quickly take them off mute. Oh, yeah, yeah, put them back on mute, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, for I've sure. done it. <laughs> I've actually done the shock value too, where, you know, even with when you're at work and you're getting paged and you take, you know, the call from the receptionist, she goes, oh, no, no. I said, look, I'm in the toilet now. Oh, I'm so sorry. You know, I just crack up laughing. Oh, no. You're going to have to call back. Oh, no. <laughs> Tell them I'm busy. I'm actually literally busy. <laughs> never have I ever faked an orgasm. Oh, I have never. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was going to say, how can men fake orgasms? My mind's tw swirling now. Can't they? Oh, well, no, you can, no, you can tell. <laughs> Craig, you can, can you? <laughs> Sadly, no. No, there's no, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way. There's I have, no but way. I don't go there. I have never. Well, you, you, yeah, you're a bit of a sex bomb. Are we letting her off the hook that easy? <laughs> no, we're not. I was just waiting for her to, come on, did you do the whole... Moaning the whole how, Sally, what is it, Sally met Harry? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because you know, you've got to get them going. But if you're just not into it, you're just like, oh, yeah, oh, you know, woohoo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not with you, though, Pete. Love you. That's what I'm Sure. <laughs> Shh, she tell us what yeah. the camera's off. <laughs> now, I didn't see which way yours was held up. Oh, I have never. I have never. I have never. She's had the one partner since she was 15. Yeah. Diplomacy yeah. is a good thing. Yes, yes, it is. She knows how to, you know, work her man. Her I man do. knows how to work her. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bloody well better, otherwise I wouldn't be there. <laughs> well, you know, Helene does want to start a new segment on the show called the Wood, the, what is it, the Buzz, the and, Buzz Woody. and Woody show, which is about sex toys, but that's a... No, it's just about, no, it's Buzz, which is sex toys, and then you've got Woody, which is the real thing. So oh, we, right. it's just a bit of discussion, but yeah, if there's any questions out there that the women want answered or get in depth... We might it out there. If you've got a, a question that you'd like Helene asked about the Buzz and Woody on a Buzz and Woody segment, send us an email or a Facebook message. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually got to do some voiceover work this afternoon for someone who's doing a Toy Story clip. Oh, and now you're going to be and thinking. I'm actually playing Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> the battery operated device. This is going to kind of put a whole new slant on the way that I do that voiceover. Now he's just going to think of now. you going, oh shit, the vibrator buzz. Bob, battery operated buddy. I think the uh, the voiceover is going to take a whole different yeah. direction now. Oh, you have to you have to show us. That's going to be hilarious. Oh no. Oh yeah, you'll have to send that one through. Yeah, okay, I think well, there I... could be a. Uh, an R-rated version of this clip <laughs> as well, definitely, definitely. It has to be now. <laughs> oh, never have I ever dyed my ubic hair. Oh, oh, I have never. 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 I really? didn't know there was such a thing. I'm still shocked <laughs> by this whole Merkin thing. I'm What's still Merkin thing? Huh? What Merkin thing? What? You've never heard of a Merkin? I'm glad I wasn't the only one. <laughs> 
a merkin, apparently, from what I've been told, unless someone was having a great joke at my expense, is a pubic wig. What? what? <laughs> exactly my response. I'm like, A, why is there such a thing? Oh no, get rid of that stuff. Why would we B, a wig? why is there such a thing? And C, why, why is, is there, there such, such a, a thing? thing? <laughs> um, there is a pubic wig. Apparently. Why would you need that? Aren't we all about the Brazilian and getting rid of yeah. it? Yeah. Exactly. Or what do they call it? The jazzle? The jazzle. I mean, maybe <laughs> if you're like <laughs> doing some kind of a 80s movie, 70s movie. 70s I don't know. Needed. But um, that would be the only reason because if you look at Austin Powers, he had that. <laughs> Bit of um, fake hair on his chest, just to. So you think there might have been a bit of, been a bit of Merc in action there too? Oh god! Oh, Maybe they. There's a topic oh. for another show. Oh, Merkins. Oh, that is, that do they, they exist the, the and why? Show. Yeah. Do we could talk about all those sort of things. Segment. Segment. Yeah. Buzz and Woody meet the Merkin <laughs> <laughs> Merkins. Do they exist and why? And if you've got one, we'd love to see your pics. Send in your Merkin pics. <laughs> no, please don't. No. Just Merkin. make sure you do the Kardashian blackout on yeah. your Merkin. <laughs> Just a bit of tough hanging up the top there so we can tell that you've got one. <laughs> so, Craig, thank you so much for joining us on the Wine O'Clock Show today. And, Helene. Thank you. Now, tell everyone about your play and where they can see it. So, at the moment, I'm playing Trip Davenport in a play called Five Women Wearing the Same Dress. It's actually written by Alan Ball, who is famous, of course, for Six Feet Under, American mm. Beauty. Oh, cool. Very, very talented writer. American oh, Beauty. you would absolutely love this play. It's really, really good. Um, I'm doing it with the Villanova Players Theatre Company. At the moment, we're in the FT Barrel uh, Theatre in Brisbane. Uh, if people wanted to find out about it, they can go to villanovaplayers.com. Uh, tickets are available. I won't be doing this weekend's shows because I have commitments in Sydney. Can't talk about that, yeah. but there's a few big You're things on the horizon now. I will discuss when I'm able to. However, I will be back on deck next weekend. It's Friday, uh, Friday nights, Saturday afternoon and night, and Sunday afternoons. Great show, five women wearing the same dress. Where, where, where is it being staged? Uh, it's at Yoronga. It's um, they're currently using the Yoronga High School Auditorium, oh, which is the FT Barrel Theatre, mm -hmm. um, for the shows, and yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. Get along, VillanovaPlayers.com for tickets. Yep. Yep. Fantastic show. Yep, we'll I put can a hook you up, up with tickets yeah. too. Absolutely. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We know great. Yes. yes. <laughs> Besties. <laughs> what do you mean I'm not on the list? Yeah, exactly. oh, you're on the list already. Don't worry about that. I'll have my people call their people and we'll work that out. Don't you worry. Thank you again, Craig. Cheers and have a fabulous weekend. Cheers. Have fun in Sydney. Thank you. Yes, enjoy. Here's to you ladies on International Women's Day, International oh, Women's you. Week. And very proud to be associated with two women as yourself, as wonderful as yourself. Oh, Thank oh, you very much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks again for joining us on The Wine O'Clock Show and a huge thank you for Craig and Helene for joining me on the couch today. We would love you to jump onto Facebook and like The Wine O'Clock Show, but more importantly, we want you to send us a quick message about what topics you would like to see discussed on the show. Until then, I'm Tam Wrigley. Have a fabulous weekend and here's cheers.